Hello, welcome back to Too Sweet MTG, and welcome to Instant Deck Techs. In this series, we go over everything you need to build a certain commander. We'll go over the strategies and the types of cards needed you need to get the deck working. Any cards we mention will be down in the description below. In this video, we're going to be looking at Ivy, Gleeful Spell Thief. It is a green and a blue for a 2 1 legendary creature, Fairy Rogue. It has flying, and whenever a player casts a spell that targets only a single creature other than Ivy, you may copy that spell. The copy targets Ivy, and as a reminder, a copy of an aura spell becomes a token. Ivy is a very cool commander. It basically lets you copy any spells that target your own creatures. This works with instants and sorceries, it works with mutate, as those also target, and importantly for this video, it also works with auras. We'll be using a little bit of all of these in the video, but primarily we're going to be focusing on suiting up our creatures with all manner of auras, getting value when we do, and hitting face with our pumped up board and our commander. This plan basically needs two things to work. We need auras with good effects, and we need creatures that we can put those auras onto. Ideally, we'll want these to work with the different sections that our deck needs to function. So for our card draw section, look out for auras like Shielding Plaques, which draw a card when they enter the battlefield. And we're going to be sticking them on creatures like Storm Chaser Drake, which draws us a card when it becomes the target of a spell. Another example is with our ramp. One with nature lets us ramp and growth out a land whenever the creature deals combat damage to a player. Combine this with a creature like Paradise Druid, which can ramp us when we need to, while also being a great creature for us to put an aura onto because of that hexproof. And remember, when we have Ivy out, it will get copies of all the auras attached to it as well. So where some cards may have previously looked a bit too expensive to cast for their effect, getting two of them now for that mana cost makes the deal much more appealing. Another type of creature that we're going to be looking to put our auras onto are creatures with Hexproof. These help us get around the worst part of auras, and that's having them removed at instant speed before the aura is able to equip. These mean that outside of board wipes, we know we're going to be able to equip our auras to them, and then get token copies onto Ivy. Of this list, all the ones that cost more than one mana, I would want to have some kind of evasion. This is because the auras we're going to be putting on them will make them scarily huge really quickly, so the evasion means that we're going to be consistently getting that damage in. Moving over to our card draw, there is a ton of good options for us that synergize really nicely with what we're trying to do with the deck. First up are auras that draw us a card when we deal combat damage to a player. Stick these on an evasive threat, and then Ivy gets a copy as well, meaning that we could very easily be drawing two cards every combat step. There's plenty of really cheap options out here, with Combat Research, Curious Obsession, Curiosity, Keen Sense, and Sixth Sense. For some more flashier options, you have Sea Dasher Octopus, and Snake Umbra, which comes with the added protection. Then we have Auras that draw us a card when they themselves enter the battlefield, with cards like Cartouche of Knowledge, Rune of Might, Sedetan Training, and Shielding Plaques. Remember with Ivy Elt, we'll get two of these, so that's double the card draw every time. Then we have some creatures that draw us cards when they get targeted with a spell, with creatures like Storm Chaser Drake, Triton Fortune Hunter, and Gnarlback Rhino. These are just really solid at keeping our hand nice and full so we can get that value train going. Then you can also look at Miletus Astronomer. This trade's only getting you an enchantment for the reach of looking three cards into your deck, so you can find yourself another aura. You then have Season of Growth, which draws us a card whenever we target a creature we control with a spell. This is a hell of a lot of synergy with everything else that we're going to be doing in the deck. On top of all of that, you can also run cards like Success and Champion and Eidolon of Blossoms. There is a good number of Enchantress effects out there. These two I think are the best in this particular deck, as they trigger when enchantment enters the battlefield under our control. So with Ivy Out, we'll get two cards whenever we resolve an aura. The older Enchantress effects tend to trigger when you cast an enchantment, so with those you would only ever get one card. These you get two, so I like them a lot more. Moving over to our ramp, and again we have plenty of great options to go over. First up is Sanctum Weaver. With all the auras, and all the copies of auras, this should tap for a bucket load of mana that we can use for all manner of mischief. We then have a selection of auras that one way or another make us mana. Mark of Sakiko makes us mana whenever the creature it's attached to deals combat damage to a player. Remember, Ivy importantly does have flying, so this should be no issue to get going. One with nature is very similar, but instead just gets a basic land out of our deck and puts it into play. Elemental Resonance makes us mana equal to the card it's attached to's mana cost. I know Ivy is only 2 mana, but you do get 2 of these with it, so you will get your investment back pretty easily next turn. Then you also have Bear Umbra, which untaps all of our lands when we attack, basically doubling the amount of mana that we can make in a turn. The Totem Armor as well will also be invaluable at protecting Ivy. Next up we have our first batch of Mana Dorks. I'd really want to focus on ones with more effects than just tapping for mana if you can, so that they can actually become scary creatures with some auras on them themselves. For example, the Flying on Birds of Paradise and Maraleaf Pixie, and then the Hexproof of Paradise Druid. After those, then you can look at some more regular Mana Dorks. These are still really good in the deck, and are definitely solid options in some more budget builds. A little bit of a spicier option now, with Jahira, Friend of the Forest. The copies of the auras we attach to Ivy are tokens, which don't actually tap when Ivy's attacking. This means you can use them with Jahira to tap for mana, which is a very nice interaction and rewards us for just doing what the deck wants to do anyway. 
Moving over to our interaction now, we are blue-green, so have a good selection to choose from. First up, we have some mutate creatures. These basically work in the same way as our auras. If we put them onto a creature, we will get a copy onto IV as well. You have Gem Razor, which is great at answering some artifacts and enchantments, and then Sawtust Demolisher answers anything that's not a creature. We then have Psychic Impetus and Vow of Flight and Wilderness. Why remove your opponent's best creatures when you can just make it attack someone else, or while getting some additional buffs onto IV to pump up its stats as well? These are all really good options and very budget friendly. Then you have a card like Trigon Predator, which is a really good evasive creature we'd be happy to suit up with any of our auras. When it's swinging, it also keeps artifacts and enchantments at bay as well. Then for some more efficient and instant speed interaction, you have cards like Pongify, Rabid Hybridization, Reality Shift, and Beast Within. These are great for when you just really need to answer a threat. For board wipes, we have cards like Curse of the Swine and Azuri's Predation, which are just great answers to any of our opponent's scary board states. For protection, we've already gone over some in the form of some Totem Armor cards, but as we're wanting to stack auras on our commander, more will definitely be helpful at keeping IV around. First, we have some one-time instants that can keep IV alive. We slip out the back and Tamiyo's safekeeping, then for some more auras, we have Alpha Authority, which can give IV Hexproof and make it really annoying to block, making it more likely to be left alive after combat. Moving over to our Wincons now, and we have some really fun and really cool ways of winning the game. First up, we have some ways of making more copies of Ivy. This can make things get really stupid really quickly, as they all get buffed up whenever we put an aura onto a different creature. You have Arenicus's Vile Duplication and Spark Double for some one-time copying, and then Helm of the Host and Vesuvian Diplomacy, which can repeatedly let us get more and more copies of Ivy for a very stupid time. On the topic of making copies, we can make more copies of our auras with Errant Street Artist and Twinning Staff, great at just pushing our deck over the top and into a winning position. Then we can move on to some cards to make Ivy a 21 point of commander damage game wrecker. First up is Rancor, for that added power and trample. Rancor is also really annoying for our opponents to remove, so it's a really solid option in the deck. You then have things like Ancestral Mask and Auramancer's Guise, which are always solid in any Auras Matters deck, but in this, where you get two Auras every time we cast them, they'll be absolutely insane and will make Ivy really huge. Talking of really huge, we have Colossification and Eldrazi Conscription. These are fantastic if you're looking for a very speedy way of finishing off your opponents. Then last up, we have Nylea's Colossus. This only takes a couple of auras ending up on Ivy to make it absolutely massive. Late game, this is a complete haymaker in the deck, and could easily break a board stall wide open. Rounding off the deck with some utility lands, there's a couple of fun options for us to look at. Alchemist's Refuge lets us flash in some auras whenever we want, which could lead to some blowout combats for us against our opponents. You then have Command Beacon, which could be really handy at letting us recast Ivy if it ever gets too expensive. In this deck, we'll hopefully be drawing lots of cards, so Reliquary Tower will be great at letting us keep those well-earned gains. Rogue's Passage is also a slam dunk in any deck that can win with commander damage, and then Scavenger Grounds is great at answering any graveyard decks at the table. The rest of your mana base will be very dependent on what you have available to you. We recently released a video with some advice on building a deck with a budget mana base, which might be of help. Until next time, please like, share, and subscribe, and let us know down in the comments if there are any commanders you'd like to see a deck tech on. Thank you very much for watching.